Today I'll be overclocking and undervolting an RTX 30 series graphics card. Let's do it. Before that, make sure to subscribe and click the bell icon so you never miss another video. Okay, so for this video I'll be overclocking an RTX 3070 simply because it has the most overclocking headroom when compared to an RTX 3080 and 3090, though this tutorial should be able to work with pretty much any RTX 30 series graphics card. But before we get into this tutorial, I just want to go over a couple of things. So first of all, I just want to say I think this video is really important for people who are getting into overclocking for the first time. So if you could help me share this video and like the video to get it out to as many people as possible, that would be much appreciated. And second, just as a warning, you know, any overclocking of any component in your computer could technically damage something and so I hold no responsibility whatsoever for what you do to your graphics card I'm simply showing you what I did to get more performance out of my graphics card though that being said I have never ever in my life actually damaged a GPU by overclocking it you could potentially maybe take some years off of the life of your video card but um, just as a warning it is technically possible especially with messing with the voltage that you could actually damage something and I hold no responsibility but with that stuff out of the way let's go ahead and get into overclocking and in order to do that you're gonna need my favorite program MSI Afterburner. So let's go ahead and go over to the website here and download it. So you're going to actually need the beta version of MSI Afterburner. So I'm going to go ahead and give you a link and when you click it, it'll bring you to this page and then you're going to want to scroll all the way down to the bottom and you're going to want to click download the 4.6.3 beta 2 build and it might take a little while here and then it'll eventually download it in a zipped file. You'll have to go ahead and open it up and then start the install process. Now once you do so, you should be able to go back to your main home screen on the Windows and then actually open it up. So I'm going to go ahead and open it up and you're probably going to see an MSI afterburner that looks something like this. Now I'm going to make a few changes before we even touch any of the overclocking stuff whatsoever. So first of all, I'm going to go over into the settings button here and then I'm going to scroll all the way over to the right and I'm going to change my user interface. So I do not like when it shows me tips. So I'm going to, you know, these will be checkmarked by default. I'm going to disable both of them. And then I also don't really like this design, although it looks pretty nice. It's a little bit hard to keep track of whether or not you have your fan speeds uh, working or not. So I'm going to go ahead and move over to what I think is the best, the MSI Gaming Z skin. So let's apply that and then you should no longer get any annoying notifications and you should have a what I believe to be a somewhat more functional version of MSI Afterburner, at least for the skin. So once you have that changed here, we're going to go into the settings here and here's something that you don't necessarily need to do or if you're afraid of uh, you know messing with your voltages, uh, definitely don't do it. But um, I unlock the voltage on all my cards all the time and that's why we downloaded the beta BIOS. It's so that we can get uh, voltage control unlocked. So out of the box, it will have both these options disabled here. You're going to want to check them both if you do want to mess around with the voltage, which could potentially give you a slightly higher overclock. And then you're going to hit apply. It'll ask you to restart the program. Once you do, you will see that this uh, voltage slider here is now no longer grayed out, and now you can mess with it. So for me, when I'm overclocking stuff, you don't necessarily have to do this, but I immediately unlock the voltage and bring it all the way to the maximum. And I also max out my power limit, which, by the way, you do need to have a good power supply if you're going to be overclocking your graphics card just as a warning now before we actually start overclocking there's one more thing you need and that's a program to stress and validate your gpu overclock so that you can make sure that it's actually not going to start crashing in games so for me i like to use 3d mark uh, time spy because it does a really good job of stressing it but that's 30 dollars. so if you don't want to spend 30 dollars just to overclock your graphics card that's totally understandable i would then i think a best second alternative would be downloading apex legends and running that in 4k with maximum settings i think that also does a pretty good job and that's free Free, so that way you don't have to spend any money. But in any case, let's start overclocking. So once you go ahead and you max out your core voltage here and your power limit and you hit apply, you can start increasing your core clock. Now, if you want to apply something on startup, make sure that you click this uh, startup button here. And that means that every time you start up Windows, what you have applied after clicking the check mark here will be set every single time you load Windows, so you don't have to open this back up and reapply it. But in any case, let's start increasing that core clock. And I think the best way to do this, if you don't know what you're doing whatsoever, would be to start increasing your core clock by around 10 or 20 megahertz, hit apply, then uh, run a game and see if it actually is stable, make sure it's not crashing. If it's stable, you can increase it another 10 or 20 megahertz, and then keep doing that until it eventually crashes, at which point, like for me, for example, I got around plus 120 by the time it started crashing, and then I had to start you know, bringing it back 10 or 20 megahertz 
records and then check it again. And you know, once you've brought it back and it's actually stable, then that probably is gonna be your maximum overclock. At which point, make sure you've hit apply, make sure it's saved to startup, and then that should be the maximum that you're gonna get out of the GPU core, which is the most important part of overclocking. But next, we're gonna move on to memory clock. And oh, one more thing I wanna mention before we actually start talking about overclocking your memory is the custom fan speed. So if you see this little gear here, if you click it, it should bring up the fan menu here. And you can set a custom fan speed to get better cooling performance out of your GPU, but it will get a little bit louder. So that is an option if you wanna do that. You can just move it around and set it up how you want. But in any case, let's start talking about memory clock. And this is very, very similar to core clock, except for when you're done with this, you do really need to make sure that you validate that it's not only working, but you're actually getting an increase in your score. Because unlike the core clock, which typically, if it's not stable, it'll just crash, the memory clock can be unstable and seem like it's working fine, but it's actually reducing your score. But in any case, much like the core clock, start increasing this, but this time by around one or 200 megahertz, until you either start seeing some sort of weird artifact acting, whether that be black screens, black boxes on your uh, image, uh, weird stars, anything that looks uh, abnormal, that's probably an unstable memory overclock, at which point you're going to want to bring your clock speed down. Or of course, if it's crashing, bring it down one or, one or 200 megahertz, and then you should eventually find your maximum memory overclock. And then once again, validate it with a game or program and make sure that your uh, FPS or scores have actually increased versus the stock that you started at, because if they're not increasing, then that means that it's actually unstable and it's actually gonna be performing worse because your memory clock is going too high and it's getting errors. And then once again, once you're done with that, you have applied it and then it's set to startup and then it should be done. And then you can actually click the save button and save this to a profile and you can set up multiple different profiles if you wanna do so. So uh, for example, I could save this as say profile one and then I can go back and forth to different profiles. You can see here I have one with um, a two gigahertz memory overclock and then plus 90 on the core. And I have one as high as plus 110 on the core. So uh, if you have clocks that are stable in some games and not in others, that's a good way of doing it. But in any case, if you made it this far into the video, you probably want to start talking about undervolting. And the reason why people like to undervolt is because it can not only save power, but sometimes you can get more performance for less power. And in order to do that, you're going to want to hit control F and that'll bring up the voltage frequency curve editor. And from here, once your clocks are set to default, you can actually go over and start adjusting how much clock speed you want at every voltage. Now, the easy way to do this would be to pick a voltage you're comfortable with. So for example, if a game's drawing up to 1.1 volts and you don't like that because it's drawing too much power, uh, you could go all the way down to maybe one volt here. And then uh, let's say for you, for example, it's stable, you know, up to 1,975 megahertz at one volt. Uh, you can go ahead and go over here, uh, increase it to 1975 megahertz and then hit apply. And then what you'll notice here is that the frequency will max out at around 1975 megahertz and then it should no longer be drawing more than one volt, which could reduce your power draw significantly. For me, I saw around a 50 watt drop and I was actually able to get a little bit more performance. So that's a pretty good trade off if you wanted to do it that way. Now, if you do set a clock speed here and a maximum voltage and it's, cr and it's crashing, that means that just like with overclocking, your clock speed's a little bit too high and you're gonna have to start dropping your clock speed at that set voltage. So for example, if 1965 megahertz here is too high, you could drop it down to like 1925 megahertz, hit apply, and at that, at that point, hopefully it would be stable. If it's not, you can just continue dropping your clock speed until you find a point that works for you. And much like with overclocking, once you've found a setting that works for you, make sure you've hit that checkbox to apply it, make sure it's set on startup, and then you're good to go. But in any case, if this video did help you with overclocking or undervolting, make sure to hit that like button. And if you're not subscribed already, make sure to do so as well. And of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, Nvidia and Intel drop prices. Also, if you want to see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.